Hi, everyone. My name is Shin Sakane. And I'm CEO and founder of Seven Dreamers. And we are the technologists that are uh, creating what the world has never seen, meaning that uh, we want to make real innovations, uh, not fake innovations. Um, so what we value is technology in life, uh, meaning that we are more B2C, like consumer products company, than B2B. And for us, the most important thing to uh, make innovations is how to pick a theme. So we have three criteria uh, when, when we pick a theme. One is new things the world has never seen. The second is that uh, uh, something to improve people's life. The third thing is something uh, very, very difficult to develop. So uh, in order to, uh, um, to meet these criteria, we do not care uh, what the business field is, uh, what the technology resources we have. Uh, we really don't care and pick uh, good themes. And we have three different, completely different uh, project themes we have. But uh, today, I want to talk about one of the, probably the most famous product that we have, uh, which is Landroid. Landroid is the world first laundry folding robot. And uh, we started this technology development back in 2005. So uh, last 13 years, we've been working on this, spending over 50 million US dollars investment into R&D. And we are about to launch a product. Uh, next year, we're going to start shipping. So uh, from, um, the, with a uh, research company, uh, we found that uh, people in a lifetime, in the ordinary household, people spend more than 18,000 hours for laundry work. And half of them, which is 9,000 hours, are spent for uh, after clothes are dried, which is folding and separating and then storing into closet, which is about 375 days. Um, that is more than a little more than one year of uh, people's like light in lifetime. So in order to automate this uh, laundry folding process, we want to liberate people from folding work and then create more valuable time, valuable time for people's life. That's the goal. So Landroid is a uh, like a little bit like a big box, like a refrigerator. So you insert um, up to 20 to 30 clothes into an insert box at the bottom. And then after that, you just start the machine. And it, you know, multiple robot arms pick up each item at the time. And then with AI and uh, visual analysis technologies, they fold and then separate and into a uh, uh, you know, pickup tray. So Landroid technology uh, consists of three different technologies, including image analysis, artificial intelligence, and robotics. And Landroid uh, takes like five steps to fold each item. Uh, picking up, spreading out, and recognize, and then fold, and sort and stack. In these five processes, image analysis technologies are used all the five processes. And then out of five, four processes use artificial intelligence. So this is one of the example is how we use AI. Um, in order to recognize it, this like, item is a long sleeve t-shirt, for example. In order to be able to, for Landroid to be able to recognize, we need, for example, about 256,000 images as a training data. If it's one tenth, like 25,000 images, recognition rate is still 75%. But when we have over 200,000 images, we have recognition rate is about 95%. We use deep learning with this a lot of like bunch of data training set. So Landroid only works under Wi-Fi connected circumstances, which is kind of like IoT device. So Landroid software inside uh, is uh, keep updated um, like, you know, very frequently and make it faster and a more uh, precise folding to achieve. So Landroid uh, follows most of the daily clothing, including uh, short sleeve pants, room wear, pajamas, and towels. And there are two different uh, convenient, convenient sorting mode. Default mode is sort by item type. You don't need to do any registration process or anything. It does separate into you know, each clothing categories. 
Another convenient function is sort by person. This is for mother, father, and kids and stuff like that. So uh, Landroid is definitely the machine and the robot to do very troublesome work for you. And also, uh, Landroid can manage your wardrobe. Um, in, on your uh, Landroid app, you can check what kind of clothing you have and how often you wear or how often you did not wear the clothes. So you can manage your, your clothes online. And we have a partnership with the fashion tech startups. So even like Landroid app can provide you a better coordinate for you. So um, a lot of people suspect that uh, someone is in the box, so which is not true. <laughs> so this is to prove that robot arms are actually folding. So the bottom robot arm pick up one item at a time. And then using visual analysis and AI technology calculations, uh, it tried to recognize what kind of clothing that is. Now it's not possible because it's still, the, the shape is not clear. So multiple robot arms has to expand to see what it is. So finally, once it's expanded, I can tell, oh, this is T-shirt. And then even though, uh, in addition, it has to know if the front or back, upside down, and measure the width and length, and, and decide where to fold. Wait, which line to fold. And once it's recognized, it starts folding. And uh, in order to fold, it require, requires about 30 AI calculations. So it's really AI intensive robot. And then eventually um, put it in the pickup tray like this. OK, so we've been working on this for the last 13 years. But back in uh, 2000, 15, which is about two and a half years ago, we had a, we signed a contract with Panasonic and Daiwa House for the further product development of the the final stage of product development. They're the also biggest, one of the biggest, two of the biggest investors of us. And uh, since we are uh, in one year from now, that we are going to actually start shipping Landroid. So a lot of people want to experience Landroid, how it's like. So we opened the Landroid Cafe and a Gallery in Omotesando, Tokyo, in the central of Tokyo. And also we uh, opened the uh, uh, demo area in San Francisco co in co-working space. So this is a kind of history of the Landroid. We started development back in 2005. And then after 10 years, we um, developed the world first completely automatic laundry folding robot. And then next year, uh, the year after, we had a you know, contract. We signed a contract with Panasonic and Iowa House. And then a year later, we established a joint venture. And now it's about to launch the product. So by challenging uh, this kind of things, uh, finally, we get kind of lucky. We get the Japan Venture Award for Innovation Prize. And then we became the regional championship of Japan um, in Japan uh, for the Startup World Cup, which will be held uh, in, uh, in May this year. So what we want to do is um, we want to become the world's most innovative company and then uh, bring you know, great technology and products to the world. So let me uh, a little bit talk about like, our background, like our passion for innovations. I strongly believe that uh, uh, technology make it, makes the world a happier place. Some people say it's like uh, AI or robot will take over people's like, jobs, which is really bad. But I don't think so. They always technology bring happiness to the people. And um, driving innovations, innovation is not an easy thing to make. It's so hard. Now, nowadays, everybody in the world wants to make innovations. And real innovation doesn't happen you know, very often. So then why? How? How we can make innovations? The most important thing uh, for innovations, I believe, is to how to find a theme. A lot of people have past success or resources, technology resources they have. They stuck with it. So they cannot come up with new ideas, new great themes. So a uh, very important thing is to forget about what you have, what kind of technology you already have, what kind of success you already have. Forget about it. You have to find a theme, which is something very, very new no one has ever done before. And you have to work hard to find it. Do the patent search and article search, and then try 
if, if, if you find one article or one patent, just get rid of this theme. You, know? you have to find something that no one has ever done before. That's the key. And then once you find a theme, uh, next thing is define the very, very uh, clear goal. You have, you, we want to develop this kind of product, this shape, and then buy when. And then uh, last thing is never give up. If you try something really new, if you want to really try to make real innovations, a lot of people, for some reason, try to stop you. Maybe it's only in Japan, I don't know. If I try to do something very strange, you know, try, trying to make a completely fully automatic laundry folding robot, maybe hundreds of people try to stop me. Oh, you stupid. You're going to fail for sure. You're not, not, that's not going to happen. You know, technology is so difficult, like don't even try. Somehow people try to stop me. But you have to keep trying and never give up. So there are many, many uh, hurdles, barriers for startups, like especially hardware startups like us. Um, there are a few things that we really need, like people, talented engineers. Time is always limited, and funding. But among these three, the toughest one is funding. So uh, hardware startup is a very, very high risk uh, business. But uh, once we succeed, the growth will be tremendous. So initial investment is a lot. So we got to find really good partners, investors. So um, fortunately, uh, we have already very, very good uh, partners, investors. But initially, it was very hard. Um, summer in 2014, we are almost broke. <laughs> uh, in uh, mid-August, uh, within two weeks, he didn't raise $3 million. We were out, broke completely. But finally, uh, one great investor supported us, and then we survived. And since then, we've raised over 100 US million dollars. Uh, we are very fortunate about it, but we had to work very, very hard on it. And then, once you set a goal, very, very like high goal, you, get, you definitely meet difficulties all the time. I think difficulty comes to everyone in the world, but especially when you have a very, very high goal, you, you know, happen to you, um, face more difficulties more often than other people. But you have to just keep working on it, keep overcoming the problems. Then eventually, if you survive, if we survive, we will be people call we are a successful company. OK, um, very. Um, interesting uh, things that uh, I've been thinking about is uh, now uh, Landroid team is the biggest team in my company. And we have about 60 engineers internally. And then a little bit less than 10 engineers from Panasonic working together. It's about 70 people's like, big team. And then uh, a lot of people think that uh, our teams, uh, team members are relatively young, energetic, very smart. And you know, fighting all the time, but trying to create something new. That's the kind of the team that people think of. But uh, uh, actually, um, our maybe 40 people out of 60 uh, in our internal engineers are uh, over 50 years old, <laughs> Japanese men. There are a couple young you know, people and a couple foreigners uh, working together. But uh, maybe close to 40 people are older. Um, Japanese engineers who we call ojisan in Japanese. Um, so if you open the door of a Landroid lab, you'll be surprised. Oh my gosh, it's a old man smell. You know, <laughs> oh my gosh. But uh, what we found is um, these uh, old engineers are mostly from Japanese major um, electronics companies like Sony, Panasonic, Hitachi, Toshiba, Sharp, and stuff like that. And then. When I first uh, saw their you know, like, uh, resume, I was so surprised like, they, they're educated so well, and they have great experiences in mega enterprises in Japan. And why, why now they want to you know, work for a startup company like us? But uh, what, they, what we found is uh, when they were uh, young, like 20s, when they just started their career in a big company, Japan was one of the greatest place for innovations, like Sony uh, invented Walkman. And a lot of home appliances always came from Japan. 
So they're very excited to make innovations in the big company. But after a couple of years, they found the world competition became so high, and what need, they need to develop is something better quality at cheaper price. <laughs> so that was not like exciting uh, you know, technology development for them for a long, long time. And then after they became 50, they, they saw our news that uh, this crazy company, Seven Dreamers, have been developing laundry folding robot, which no one has ever done before. And then they couldn't stop <laughs> uh, you know, applying for us. And then they came to us. And now, last couple of years, those oji like old Japanese engineers, are the ones who are really, really making innovations. They, they brought this you know, dream uh, come true. So what I think is, uh, you know, people think that the recently uh, Japan no longer make innovations. You know, some Japanese people thinking that way, or people from overseas thinking that way. But I, I can tell it's not true. Um, there are unbelievable number of smart engineers are in this country, and all you need to do is to find a good theme. Once you find a great theme, and then if there is someone who said, "Okay, let's do it. Let's make it happen." then there are so many talented engineers in this country. So I believe that uh, Japan can still make innovations, and then we can bring uh, innovations to the world. So that's what I've been thinking recently. And we are trying to prove that, and then we will try to become the world number one innovative company in the near future. Thank you very much.